Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. It is time for Under 30. And today we discuss a name I don't believe we've discussed before, at least not intentionally. That's Kenview, of course, parent company of popular uh, consumer brands that I think we've all heard of from Tylenol to Motrin to Benadryl and many, many others. Joining us now to discuss more is George Tillis, City Markets correspondent for the Schwab Network. George, this was a spinoff that I think kind of happened in the backdrop, in the background. And uh, I think KDU yeah. has kind of gone uh, overlooked to use another one of your segments here for you. Uh, but a stock that has a lot of familiar brands. Yeah, very much so. I mean, these are essentially a collection of premier brands, um, everything from, like you mentioned, Tylenol, uh, Band-Aid, you know, when it comes down to wound care, uh, Listerine for, uh, for other health care names that you're probably familiar with. But anyhow, this company was spun off in 2023, was actually an IPO spinoff from Johnson & Johnson. So it's essentially a collection of the premier consumer brands. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, things going on. Obviously, the stock is doing well today. The stock has been higher over the last year by about 17 or so percent. And one of the things about this spinoff was it's all about essentially unlocking value. I, I talked about General Electric earlier with, uh, with the guys on Fast Market. Uh, the breakup of that company into three different uh, divisions or three different companies is, was tremendously successful. So I think J&J uh, was trying to do a similar type of thing. In other words, spinning off some of the more unprofitable areas of its business, unlocking the valuation multiple for its pharmaceutical business. Uh, and again, it did that by spinning off KVU as a separate company. But um, one of the things that's been going on is even though it was spun off into its core components, which includes things like skincare, health, and beauty, as well as essentials, uh, and when it comes down to things like medical care or medicines, um, there's other talks about um, now spinning off the, the, uh, the beauty segment uh, of its business. And this is essentially what Starboard uh, Value, which is an activist management fund, has taken a pretty significant stake in the company, and they're actually trying to shake up the company once again to spin off their skin and healthcare business because they're actually seeing more value potentially to be unlocked here, considering if you look at that portion of the business, it's generating about 27% of total sales, but it's actually not necessarily as profitable as his other divisions because it's only generated about 16% of EBITDA for the entire business. So. It's a story about a spinoff and potentially another spinoff of a separate company or division, another skincare business, which, again, shareholders are appreciating as the stock is moving up nicely today. Yeah, so, George, I mean, I, anytime I hear this activist investor, to me, this is a, a sign of a company that is, frankly, needing some help. So, I mean, should we take this as like a vote of confidence or perhaps signs that now, the, I mean, basically, since the spinoff, this company is in need of like that, that next catalyst of growth or, I mean, like shoring up its financials, frankly? Well, so that's a good question. So what happens typically in these spinoffs is, uh, you know, parent companies or larger companies will spin off a smaller company with debt. Uh, what I see here is, is not necessarily a debt problem, uh, even though if you look at the debt on the balance sheet, it's about $8.5 billion, but there's $42 billion in equity. So it's, very, it's right size in terms of its debt. I mean, the problem for KVU is um, it's not a growth company. And if you Consider the other thing, uh, you know, the, the brands are well established. They're brands we recognize and trust and have faith in. But there's also a tremendous amount of private label brands, particularly in skincare and beauty, um, that is now out competing, you know, these uh, these legacy brands. And I think that's a, a problem that um, that Starboard is looking at. And essentially that is now encumbering the expansion of the multiple for the other businesses, which is their essential health business and their, uh, their, uh, their core uh, uh, health business, which includes Tylenol and so forth. So mm -hmm. there's a potential for more value to be unlocked here. But as the stock price has been rising, particularly in the last few months, it's not just today, it's moving higher. Obviously, the market has got some impulse or insight into uh, this activist investor move. Um, mm -hmm. the, the forward multiple is expanding. And so um, what I see here is the company, if you look at the forward uh, revenue estimates, they're about 3%. The, uh, the, the forward earnings growth is around 7%. And right now, based on 2024's earnings, the stock is trading around 19 times earnings. So typically, if a stock is uh, you know, selling product, the, the revenue growth rate and the earnings growth rate are both in the single digits, 
you may see stocks trade at low double digit multiples, let's say between 11 and mm -hmm. 13. And right now it's trading at 19. So it's trading essentially like uh, there's value to be unlocked here. So I can't say exactly how much more room there is uh, in this potential move. But nonetheless, I can see that the price of the stock is moving contingent upon more value being, being unlocked. And, and it could be uh, based upon this activist move by Starboard. Makes a lot of sense. I would also add to perhaps just negative correlation to treasury mar or positive correlation to the treasury market, negative correlation to yields, uh, as well as perhaps risk off positioning, given the strong consumer staple uh, that it is. Thanks to George Tillis, as always.